the idea that left wing supposed, you know, or I mean, I guess it's left wing, but uh, ideas associated with the left wing in this country in terms of uh, government's role and relationship to society um, are not in any way an anathema to so-called moderate voters. Uh, that if you look at the polling, there is broad-based support for things like Social Security. There's broad-based support for all sorts of uh, government intervention into uh, the marketplace uh, that we have been led to believe for years was contrary to what a so-called moderate voter or even a conservative voter wanted. And data shows that's not the case. Why didn't we know this? Yeah, so I think there's a few different answers to that question. I think uh, one thing, one answer is that, um, you know, actually it is has always been this way as far as um, analysis of, of survey data running back for decades has generally painted the picture of the American public being fairly consistently operationally liberal. When you ask them about concrete policies, they tend to give liberal answers, whether the government should spend more on education, spend more on health care, um, tax the rich. Uh, but symbolically conservative, if you abstract the positions and say, like, you know, do you like the limited government or whatever, that they would answer conservative when, the, when it's posed abstractly. They have a symbolic attachment to conservative rhetoric, but not to conservative policy on economics. Um, but uh, then again, uh, like we said before, these culture war issues, uh, you know, conservatives do have um, have uh, an upper hand with some voters on, and it isn't impossible for them to wed those various re- cultural and racial resentments to, you know, an upward redistribution of economic agenda by uh, painting, you know, uh, transfer programs as giveaways to these undeserving uh, minorities, um, and that that is a, a factor that that facilitates that. But but even with that said, you know I think let's remember that that Paul Ryan, uh, when he was the vice presidential candidate in 2012, campaigned against Barack Obama's Medicare cuts. Um, you know, and and, and right. ultimately George W. Bush, uh, you know, expanded Medicare benefits and was unable to cut Social Security. So, you know, uh, I, I think that the the operational liberalism of the even Republican electorate uh, has made itself manifest uh, in, even in recent history uh, before the current moment. Do you think that's a media? I mean, do you think that the reason why that um, uh, that myth um, has been has been so durable is that it's a function of the media? I mean, that, you know, because I mean, it's quite clear, right? You it is almost impossible to find a Republican voter who cares about the deficit, say now. Right. I mean, I just like it, it just that 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 breed of Republican voter seems to have gone completely extinct in the course of like a 16 month period. And um, and maybe they never really were around. Um, I wonder if you think it's a, a media sort of a, a media construct or is it just like the voices in the Democratic Party that wanted to perpetuate that myth because they had an ideological agenda that basically led them to want to promote um, that idea. Uh, They have less uh, salience. I mean, why, why has that, I guess, construct seems to have faltered and failed? Yeah, I don't know. I think that people in the Republican base, I think that the narrative that Barack Obama, this, you know, uh, whatever, uh, fiscally, this irresponsible uh, black guy was, was bankrupting the nation by handing out Obama phones and that, that the deficit, I think the deficit mattered to the extent that it was framed as the story about, uh, you know, irresponsible management by the African-American president to a certain segment of voters. But uh, to the broader question, I think that, um, you know, I, I think that the the folk theory of democracy, that the people... That the competent citizens, that, that, that the elected representatives are reflecting the views of their voters is, is very strong as like a, you know, frame for discourse. Um, and so, you know, to, to, to recognize or, or to, to posit that actually the Republican Party top legislative priorities, what it devotes itself to when it has power, 
is completely detached from the will of its voters is to, you know, uh, stipulate that American democracy is completely broken, which is a rather radical idea to have as like, you know, the accepted premise when you're discussing politics on cable news. Um, and so I think that that plays into it. That there's just a, you know, we want to believe that our democracy works, and therefore these people who are voting for uh, elected representatives who continually cut taxes and try to cut their benefits, they must, uh, that must be what they want. Um, so I think that that's a factor, but I agree that the, that the other thing that I'm most concerned with is um, that there is a real interest uh, within the Democratic Party, you know, with this awkward coalition between finance, corporations, and, you know, progressive poor people uh, in progressive middle class and, and upper middle class and working people, um, is that in order for finance to justify its priorities, it needs to present them as uh, electorally pragmatic, or else what is the argument? And we right. saw this, you know, just a couple of weeks ago with the, the bill, you know, that uh, loosened regulations on Wall Street. Right. And and uh, God knows what the argument. I mean, the argument there is that uh, from a, a community bank standpoint, these local regional banks really wanted this. And if we have to give away uh, if we have to give away this to the uh, the bigger banks uh, in the end, there's a there's a um, electoral compulsion. All right. Well, so with that said, now that there is at least in the Repu- in the Democratic Party, there is seems to be increasing uh, awareness that that narrative is false. Um, what is the radical proposal that moderate Democrats should be running on that you suggest? Right. Well, so I think just an illustration of how uh, politics does not work, as pundits tend to suggest, would, uh, is the fact that um, Kirsten Gillibrand recently came out in favor of a federal jobs guarantee, which is uh, a policy that has a long history on the Democratic left. Uh, Huey Long, the populist demagogue in the 30s, put it in his Share Our Wealth plan which was like a far less alternative to the New Deal. Martin Luther King endorsed it, um, and it nearly became law under Jimmy Carter, uh, but ultimately the Carter administration uh, took a right turn and, and sort of then our country did and it disappeared off the, the face of the debate. But basically how it works is that the government would guarantee a job to anyone who cannot find it in the private sector and that um, the doing essentially public works so that there would be local offices that would need it define what a community's needs are, what, what basic, simple work needs to be done, streets can be cleaner, child care, whatever, um, and that this would be an office that you could go to if you don't have a job and apply. And what this would do is uh, be like a more effective, bulletproof minimum wage, uh, you know, because uh, any worker in the private sector would know that, oh, I can, if, if I'm not treated well here, there's the federal government does provide a minimum standard of job, which is not just wage, but uh, minimum benefits and minimum scheduling security, um, and everything, and, and that this would give every worker in the private sector the ability to walk off without risking, uh, you know, long-term unemployment. So it would really change the balance of forces between capital and labor, and be a, you know, a giant expansion of government intervention in the economy. But so, so if the world worked as you know the blue dogs want us to think, if politics did, this would have no support among conservative voters because it's it's like you know you put it on a left-right axis, it's way to the left. Uh, but, but people don't see it that way. Um, and uh, the idea that the government has a responsibility to provide jobs to voters is like a totally mainstream idea. And the idea that, that one way to do this would be for the government to just directly give jobs to voters makes a ton of sense. And so there was a, a recent polling um, by Data for Progress, this, this uh, new progressive think tank that showed that um, they, they took a, a recent national poll from the uh, Center for American Progress on a job guarantee and were able to, through demographic modeling, uh, project the, the support, the level of support from state to state. And they found that in rural zip codes, uh, this proposal has 67% support. In urban zip codes, it has 69% support. It has one of the lowest differentials between urban wow. and rural support. Um, well, well. Eric, I mean, we're we're out of time, but this is something uh, I want to invite people to go check out your piece, the radical proposal that moderate Democrats should be running on. Sixty-seven percent in rural uh, districts, sixty-nine percent in um, uh, urban districts, and it's a great policy. There's no reason not to. We're going to take a break, uh, Eric. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. Sam Cedar, Ring of Fire Radio. <laughs> 